Welcome to worship and a good morning to all of you. I suppose I could still say Happy New Year. It's still, still in its infancy. We see that every day. I would call your attention to all of the announcements that are printed, and we have a, a couple others. Next Sunday, there is going to be, after worship, uh, a discussion about the, the church budget. Uh, that's because on the 22nd of January, it is time for our congregation's annual meeting, and you are warmly welcome to be a part of that discussion uh, both on the 15th and on the 22nd. During the sermon today, you're going to be seeing some pictures uh, about uh, the baptism of our, our Lord. A year ago in January, I was in Palestine and Israel and Jordan, and uh, I have all sorts of pictures that I would love to share, and so I am doing that. Just a real quick explanation. If you want to hear more, I'd be glad to talk about it. But <clears throat> part of what we don't understand is that the place where John was baptizing was surrounded by what we call the wilderness. And as you're going to see, the wilderness isn't what most Iowans think of when we talk about wilderness. And inside the wilderness, there's this little green spot around the Jordan River. And uh, that, that's something that I just wanted to point out. And uh, it's also interesting that both Israel and Jordan have places where they think John the Baptist was preaching. Uh, obviously some self-interest there. Uh, the Jordanians do have, uh, are backed by the fact that there's a, a fourth century foundations of a fourth century church by the place that they think that John was. So like I said, I would love to talk about that if you would like to do that. Finally, our worship service today, we are using the greeting Kyrie and Gloria on page 138. And later on, we are going to sing the Alleluia verse. But the Alleluia verse that is in the bulletin and on the screen will be incorrect because we are using the Alleluia verse that is on page 142. Uh, in connection with setting three. So we, we will be using that one, and of course the organist knows that. <laughs> Finally, we lost two dear members of our congregation this week to death, Selma Clemens Root and Connie Damon. Damon. And uh, we need something like the baptism of our Lord to remind us of how we are all connected and, and the wonders of what our baptism does for us. So it's a special day today. With all that said, let's begin by singing uh, hymn number 301, Bright and Glorious is the Sky.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, the Lord of the Lord, we take Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O God, our Father, at the baptism of Jesus, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into Christ faithful to their calling to be your daughters and sons, and empower us all with your Spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Isaiah 42, 1 to 9. Here is my servant whom I'm up, whom I'm uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he was a stab until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands waiting for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Here ends the first reading. The psalm is Psalm 29, and we will read it responsively. 
Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare, and in his temple all say, Glory. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. The second reading is from Acts 10. 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak to Cornelius and his household. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is, ex is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Here ends the second reading. Please stand to welcome the gospel. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented Jesus saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented, and when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, Suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated.
I invite the children to come forward for a message. Well, it's good to see you first time this year. <clears throat> Happy New Year to you. I notice none of you have your swimming suits on. Why is that? Would it be a good time to get wet? Why not? Because it's winter. <clears throat> if you have your swimming suit on and you get wet and you go outside, you turn into a kidsicle. Right? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> there's an important thing about water that we're going to talk about today. In that Jesus, <clears throat> we're going to hear about Jesus' baptism. And <clears throat> Jesus comes up out of the water and wonderful things happen. And that's the same thing that happened at your baptism. But there's a, a, a big thing. Is it good to get wet or not to get wet? Well, not to get wet in the winter. Do you like to get wet other times? Like Say that again. Like in the yeah, well, <clears throat> would you like to get wet now? No? Okay. <clears throat> There's a, the problem with getting wet, Jesus comes out of the water, and it meant that something was going to change in his life. That something new was going to happen. And that's the same thing that happened to us at baptism. When we came through the waters of baptism, all of a sudden something new happened. And so when we remember our baptisms, it's about getting wet. And that we expect something new to happen. So when you take a bath or take a shower or you get a drink of water or anything that you deal with water, I want you to be thinking about your baptisms because the thing that happens when we get wet is that we hear how wonderful children of God we are. And so you can remind yourself of that every time you deal with water, okay? Whether you get wet or not. I'm gonna say some more about that and I'm gonna let you go back to your seats. Thanks for coming up. Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I know that I'm dating myself when I tell you this next thing, but I couldn't come up with anything that newer. <clears throat> For those of you old enough to remember the TV show Lassie, is that every time Lassie came into the house barking and going around in circles. We knew the fact, and, and June Lockhart or Timmy or whoever would say, I think Lassie is trying to tell us something. Well, today I'm your Lassie, because I'm barking and going around in circles telling you that in this reading, God is trying to tell us something. The story is about the fact that something is happening. And the reason that's important is because of things weren't happening. People felt like the heaven had been shut up. There were no prophets. The spirit had vanished. The word of the Lord was absent. They were without God. But in this baptism, everything changes. 
Jesus comes up out of the water and the heavens are open. And the Spirit comes down like a dove. And the voice comes out and says, This is my Son, the Beloved. For three chapters, Matthew has been talking about all the various things about Jesus' credentials and, and how people reacted to it. <clears throat> and God isn't going to let it go any further without having us know that this is now the time. There's no speculation. This is fact. Jesus is God's son and he's on a mission. That's because he wants to include us in that mission as well. In two ways, as receivers and as, as participants. When God speaks, only in Matthew do, do all the, the people there hear it. God is speaking and it's an epiphany. It's a revelation. It's a spotlight on Jesus. Here's the one who's going to go into the brokenness of the world and make it all right. This is the one who's chosen. This is the job that he's authorized to do. He is God with us. And don't <clears throat> get caught up on the Baptist talking about all of this <clears throat> winnowing chaff and, and burning fire stuff. It isn't about settling scores. It's about fixing the problem. And how is Jesus going to do that? Well, that's the enticement. is for us to crack open the Gospel of Matthew and to hear all of Jesus' teachings and actings that are making things right. Notice that all of the powers that oppose him, that put him on the cross because they're trying to destroy him, but the cross isn't destruction, it's vindication. And so Matthew ends with disciples being commissioned. And that commission isn't about get more people to help pay the church's bills. That commission is about we are founding a community that is going to gobble up Jesus' teachings and all of the sayings that he has. And as we wrestle with them, the Spirit is going to be there and Jesus is going to be there to teach us. And we are going to find ourselves transformed. That people are going to say, look at that. We've got to find out about what this teaching is all about. I think God is trying to tell us something. We could be changed. And it happens. The story of the church is that we find ourselves brought into the way of healing and being made right through Jesus' death and resurrection. With Jesus coming out of the water, one of the words that Matthew uses a lot is Jesus going up. Jesus comes up out of the water. Jesus goes up on hills and mountains and all sorts of other things. Jesus goes up on a cross. When I hear going up, I think of the old days when there were people who actually had a job running an elevator. <laughs> and the door would open and the first thing they would ask is going up. And that's what I, I think of here today. Because with the beginning of this story of Jesus' baptism, with the connection to our baptisms, the whole point is Jesus is asking us, going up, are you going to go up and be a disciple and follow? Are you going to come up and learn and in the process have to wrestle but be changed? Because this word that Jesus has, just as we, we sung in the liturgy, these are the words of eternal life. And this is the way where we find healing for a brokenness. That we find that being yoked with Jesus is the way that sees us through sin, death, and the devil. And so Jesus comes to us today in this story, not only just that he's trying to tell us something, 
but that he's connecting himself to us and saying, come with me. I'll be with you forever. And there you will have life. There you will have wholeness. There you will have peace. This is just one story in a huge amount of stories, but it's the very thing that gives us life. And so he says, come to me and to my word, and there you will find all sorts of things, and you will lose all sorts of things, but most of all, that's where we'll be together. Amen. We sing the hymn 456, Baptized in Water. It is customary in the church that on All Saints Sunday that we remember those who have died in the past year. It is a relatively new custom in the church, but one that is taking root in that we use the baptism of our Lord as a time to remember those who have been baptized in the previous year. Hear now the words of Mark. People were bringing little children to Jesus in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. These are the <clears throat> children who have been baptized uh, roughly in the last year or so. Fletcher Adams, Myla Mitchell, Blake Kern, Briar Milbrandt, Quinn Herrick, Hayden Huseman, Brooklyn Skyrie, Harper Bremer, Rayleigh Voigt, Liv Rosendahl, Peyton Maiman, Elsie Wagstad, Laney Kleckner, Jaseel Gieselson, Cassette Balsley, Rayleigh Jensen, Lane Clark, Gray J Johans, Heidi Beekert, Nolan Weber, Kip Relo, Hattie Smalley, Cohen Pop, Paxton Hansen, and Kyler Kittleson. And, just to, and now let us confess our faith by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in God, in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the new life you give us through holy baptism. Especially we ask you to bless those <clears throat> that are, are celebrating uh, the first year of their baptisms. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and increase in them your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, let the people say amen. amen. And we give them this blessing. May Almighty God, who gives us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgives us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let the people say amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share that gift of peace with one another. And when you are finished, you may be seated and we'll receive the offering.
Please stand and let's sing hymn number 445. Let us pray that the dawn from on high will shine for the church, the world, and all those in need. For all who are baptized in Christ and anointed with the Holy Spirit, that their mission and ministry may be a light to the nations. Lord, in your mercy. For all who govern and serve, that justice and peace be established in all corners of the earth. Lord, in your mercy. For those weakened by age or illness or need, that you take them by the hand and uphold them with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy. For all who doubt that they are your sons and daughters, that they may be assured by the voice of your promise. Lord, in your mercy. For our congregation, that we will not grow weary or faint as we share your grace and forgiveness with all people. Lord, in your mercy. In thanksgiving for all the saints, especially today we name Selma and Connie, that your light upon their lives may guide us also to be instruments of healing and peace. Lord, in your mercy. God of splendor and light, hear our prayer and illumine us with the radiance of your glory shown in Jesus Christ our Lord. Let the people of God say Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing hymn number 310.
Go in peace, serve the Lord.